delegates, student officers, annual and advisors, administrative staff, friends and guests. It is with much joy and excitement that I welcome you to the opening ceremony of Paris Model United Nations 13. In this 13th session of Amen, our theme is achieving global equality and thereby addressing the oppression of and discrimination against political, social, cultural, and ethnic minorities around the world. Oppression comes in many of these forms. And these injustices are observed and endured not only in the developing world, but in developed nations as well. Inequality is an issue that has transcended national borders, cultures, and societies for millennia. And the subjugation of man over men has too often muddled the waters of humanity. Inequality is an issue that has led to the destruction of families, homes, entire communities, and even nations. Inequality is an issue that pits humans against one another and arbitrarily divides us over innate differences that should be celebrated, not feared or hated. We segregate each other for reasons that are so nonsensical, so irrational, and yet it is so often done and is perpetuated to this day. Children do not choose at birth where they are born, in what households they are raised, the color of their skin, their sexual orientation, the religion of their family, or whether they will develop a mental or physical disability. And yet, these irreversible, unalterable characteristics are in so many instances what we allow to define us. This issue of inequality affects us all. It affects every individual and every family around the world in one way or another. From the Sunni Muslims living in minority and Shiite dominated regions to the migrant workers being used akin to slaves in Qatar to build infrastructure for the 2022 World Cup to transgender teenagers struggling with personal identity in conservative households. There is no denying that the world has a hard time with the notion of equal rights. Following the atrocities of the Holocaust, as an international community, we gathered together to establish this United Nations. And we uttered the words, never again. And yet, now almost 75 years later, we must ask ourselves to what extent we have upheld this oath. There are far too many examples where we outright failed to do so. In 1994, 500,000 ethnic Tutsis in Rwanda were killed. In 100 days, 20% of this nation's population was decimated. As it happened, the world, including the United Nations, did little to nothing to stop a modern genocide. In 2013, the Russian government banned any and all attempts to speak in favor of equality for non-traditional relationships, which has influenced the surge in hate crimes motivated by homophobia. And since the law has passed, many innocent men and women have been persecuted, been beaten down and imprisoned. And still, in 2013, violence against women takes the forms of rape, domestic violence, female genital mutilation, child and forced marriage, and acid attacks. According to UN statistics, one in three women will be beaten, raped, coerced into sex, or otherwise abused during her lifetime. Life free from violence is a fundamental human right. And yet, nearly one billion women around the world will not have that freedom. This blatant sexual inequality 
and grave violation of global human rights exacerbates instability and insecurity around the world. But with all the failures in the past 75 years, we have also witnessed positive change that has the power to reignite hope. We have learned that the international community's combined power and political pressure can be unstoppable. From the abolishment of apartheid South Africa to the United Nations Office of Political Affairs ensuring fair, free, and equally accessible elections in countries around the globe. There is much to be proud about and many reasons to rejoice. Progress made towards equality, though, is not something that has been obtained through bureaucratic channels alone. In fact, ordinary people, often risking their lives, work so that others may enjoy equal rights. There are so many examples of this in the world. Mawla Yousafzai, a 16-year-old in, in Pakistan, is a living, breathing testament of the impact that common citizens can have. Living under the oppressive ruling of the Taliban, which restricts her own ability to attend school as a young girl, she risks her life every day, even taking a gunshot to the head, to fight for a woman's right to education. Pepe Nziyama, a 31-year-old Ugandan transgender person and a pan-African human rights defender who is the program director of an organization called Sexual Minorities Uganda. Although his country is one where there are virtually no legal protections for LGBT people and where homosexual activities can lead to life imprisonment or execution, Pepe has mobilized, coordinated, led, organized, and moderated actions to promote and protect the liberties of LGBT persons in Uganda. In his lifetime, he has been arrested, threatened, named, and shamed in local media. Jessamine Rodriguez, a 36-year-old native Canadian now living in New York, she is the CEO of a company called Hot Bread Kitchen. Hot Bread Kitchen employs immigrant workers, providing them with the skills and the know-how to succeed in the culinary industry, integrating them both economically and socially, while still preserving and celebrating their respective cultural backgrounds. <laughs> Malala, Pepe, and Jessamine, these are just three ordinary people doing extraordinary things in the pursuit of equality. I'd like to point out that we are ordinary people too. And like these three incredible young people, each of us has the capacity to positively affect our world. I don't know what brought you to this conference. Maybe you've been doing MUN for years. Maybe you just wanted to visit Paris. Or maybe your parents made you come. Ultimately, I don't think it matters. What's important is that we find ourselves gathered here to engage in conversation to challenge one another on what nations around the world have done and need to do to advance and protect equality. And we get to do this in this most incredible facility, the UNESCO headquarters, this gift of a setting. The very purpose of UNESCO is to contribute to peace and security by promoting international collaboration in order to further universal respect for justice, the rule of law, human rights, and equality. Now, I know that we don't all aspire to become politicians or diplomats, but as future doctors, teachers, business leaders, I hope this weekend's remarkable experience will inspire you to take responsibility for and contribute to the multidisciplinary solutions we desperately need to achieve global equality in our interconnected world. I hope that you, the delegates that constitute this General Assembly, coming from around the world. Enjoy getting to know one another. I hope you engage, adapt, improvise, and immerse yourselves in our uncompromising theme. And lastly, I hope the experiences from this conference will launch you in the spirit of Malala, of Pepe, and of Jesse. I ask that everyone here consider this theme of achieving global equality, not as the departure point for an MUN conference, but as the departure point for a lifelong commitment.